to Cape Coburn. We're hoping to find kelp there because there's high currents. It's a little bit far away, um, but there's also potential for lots of seaweed diversity and sea urchins. We're just picking up John, our boat driver, and so we're getting ready to go out this morning. We are uh, we'll going to Cape Coburn today. It should be an hour and a half. Nice weather. Can see the bottom, can see lots of stuff. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, it's going to be so beautiful this time. No wind. <laughs> When we dive, it's really important to keep careful dive logs. So we write down um, how much air we used, how deep we went, what time we went in and out of the water. One thing we're excited about, if we mark these sites really well, we can come back in five years, in 10 years, and we can actually detect change, like with climate change. different temperatures and we can use that to understand how the seaweed communities and the kelp forest might change in the future. So Roger and I are here collecting specimens that we're going to take back to the Canadian Museum of Nature. We're going to put them in the herbarium where they can be studied. We're also going to collect, we're collecting DNA so that'll go into the cryobank at the museum. I'm also going to make duplicate specimens that I'm going to leave here at Char's so people that come to Char's can look at um, like identified seaweed specimens. Look at this beautiful beach! We're going to hang out at the beach and warm up and eat a few sandwiches and some snacks and maybe some M&Ms and ketchup chips too. <laughs> then we're going to dive again. 
collect more seaweed. And then tonight we're giving a talk at Char's. Tank side. There's grizzly bears in the area, so we brought a gun just in case. se retrouver autour des laminaires. J'ai deux, euh, deux verres marins, des poliquettes. Donc ici, c'est un verre à écailles. Puis ici, c'est un verre de, je pense, le genre méréiste. Donc, euh, voilà. One thing kelp forests do is they take carbon, or carbon dioxide, out of the coastal ocean and they trap it in biomass. We call this a carbon sink. So the kelp forests in the Arctic are actually taking CO2 out of the atmosphere. One thing our project is interested in looking at is if the, as the sea ice retreats, you get more light reaching the seafloor and these seaweeds are going to grow faster, their forests are going to become bigger, and they're going to become more of a carbon sink. It's a silver lining story, but all of these things are changing and we have to understand how our carbon cycling is changing in our ecosystems if we're going to mitigate climate change. What do you see down there? Uh, all kinds of red algae and kelp and green algae. See the ortho? No, you guys were down forever. We just had a great dive. We found a really big patch of kelp. Um, we're not 100% sure what species, so it'll be interesting to try and figure that out. There was also lots of red algae and brown algae, and it was all in these kind of really lush patches. And Karen sampled some quadrats, and Kimi took video the whole time, and I took biodiversity samples, and I also took a lot of photos, so it was a good dive. 